Greetings, epic adventure seekers. I'm Allie Beerman, your guide to demystifying your world. And you're joining us here today for Let's Get Metaphysical, Connecting Heart and Mind. Today is a very special show for me and for you. It's episode 75 of our podcast. And I'm celebrating with Dr. Marissa Pay because honestly, I feel like we're soul sisters, and you'll learn more about that in a moment. The time is perfect to remind you it is time to step in a new direction. It's time to get out of your own way and into living your life the one you want for you, your way. The link to get that gift is in the show notes. Dr. Marissa is known as the Asian Oprah, and you'll quickly know why. Her guest list for her radio show reads like a who's who of celebrities across all fields, including I was one of those lucky enough to be on her show. Her skills include organizational psychology, speaking, and consulting all over the world, motivating individuals and organizations to be happy 88% of the time. And you'll definitely want to click all the links to all her websites that will be in the show notes. And I love the way you put it. You say in your spare seconds, and I can imagine with your schedule, they are literally seconds, that you enjoy raising recovering teenagers, raising sailboats. Looks like you do some scuba diving too. Clearly, you live out your life motto. No regrets for the past and don't die wondering for the future. Uh, I have hosted sites for happiness and thriving, and they inspire people. But I gotta tell you, until I went to your sites, I feel filled with love. And that's been missing from my site. So inspiration and causing people to fill with love, they're two different things. So I hope it's okay with you if I borrow some of your style to redo my site. And I welcome, welcome, welcome you to our show. Thank you so much, Allie. It's a blessing and an honor to be here with you and to uh, coincide with your work on happiness. So glad to be here. I first learned about you from my friend, Mary Garcia, back in the days of Agape. She shared your podcast with me. You got to love the name of this podcast, guys. Take my advice. I'm not using it get balanced with Dr. Marissa. I was immediately hooked. And then I saw your Facebook challenge. It was a 21 day fast from complaining. And I felt like I met my soul sister because I've been living this and teaching it, not quite in the way you do it, but oh my gosh, everything, even some of the same words that you use, I use them too. Could you please share with us what the number eight means in Chinese culture? Sure. Eight is a lucky number. It's a homophone for good fortune. Ba is Mandarin for eight. Fa is Mandarin for good fortune. So I use a lot of eights uh, because everyone has a birthright to good fortune and happiness. And so I, uh, I'm on a happy 88 mission, 88 million more happy people in the next eight years. That keeps me a little bit busy. And when we first met, it was actually only 8 million in the next eight years. And I've actually over uh, shot that. So I had to change it. Uh, wow. When right uh, before COVID, I call that time hashtag BC19, the time before COVID, I was on book tour with a best-selling book, Eight Ways to Happiness from Wherever You Are, which I don't think I had the first time I spoke to you. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, blessed with an interview on ABS-CBN, which was the largest Filipino channel 
in an interview with Karen Davila with one of my speaking partners, Jessica Cox, and that uh, distributed over 4 million, I believe, just in that uh, broadcast alone. And then I was in China after that, uh, doing, uh, again, speaking and traveling. And I uh, was on Sejuan TV on a show called The Fragment, The Fragrance of a Woman. And that had a distribution of again, over 4 million throughout China. So I had to quickly say, uh, we need another number. And because I am an overachiever, recovering overachiever, we went to 88 million, which I probably won't by the time I go to the other side, but it's okay. It's a good number to uh, uh, strive for. So not strive, it's a good number to intend towards and so 88 million is a good number and we're probably i would say uh, about 28 million now because i've been so grateful and lucky with my influencing now on social media platforms as well as the distribution of the book in uh every single uh, uh bookstore in uh, North America, as well as they're, they're distributing it in Target, also known as Target, and Walmart. So it has really, truly blossomed into everything that I intended and more. So I'm grateful for that. Long answer to eight, but eight is a good number. That's amazing, because I know every culture has their own numbers. And I have two Qigong teachers, both of whom are Chinese. And they talk about three and nine. So you're the first person I've heard with the eight. Hmm. I was really intrigued. I didn't realize that you had a Qigong because I would love to add your practice to mine. And I was disappointed I don't live in California since you do it live on the beach, Fui. But, yeah, but you can always get the download. It's a 28-minute moving meditation that promotes inner peace one breath at a time. You can download that at my website. It's a $20 donation to my nonprofit, which is also called Eight Ways to Happiness, and it helps kids, teens, and young adults who have temporarily forgotten their birthright to happiness. So you're welcome to that download. I'll gift you one and just send it to you so that you can... Uh, uh, get a sense of the the moves and how you can it's got tai chi qigong 18 forms tied in with a little happiness coaching that's really cool i've been doing qigong for three years and i have to be really not feeling well to skip a day because yeah. it, it's well you know what it does how it makes you yes. feel so i was very taken aback by your interview on Fox News where you talked about your childhood mm -hmm. and I didn't realize all that stuff and you mentioned how people go through a trauma early in life and like I also teach struggle is optional we all go through bad things but your story is oh my gosh would you mind sharing that because I think that's so powerful for so many people so i'm one of the seven out of ten of us who've had childhood trauma and the interesting thing about that number my honorable moniker oprah i'm called the asian oprah i was actually introduced to oprah as the asian oprah by michael bernard beckwith the founder of agape and her response as an aside was to look at me smile look down look up and say nice pants <laughs> And uh, my response was to not say that I really wanted to say, uh, do you want my pants? <laughs> but I did not say that. But my honorable moniker, Oprah, says it's as high as eight out of 10 who've had childhood trauma, that that statistic of seven out of 10 is actually underplayed. Now, these days, psychologists are very, um, they range all the way up to 93% of children have had some kind of childhood trauma. We do know that over 88% uh, in uh, incarceration have been through childhood trauma, it, even if that, I think that is an 
uh, also lower than it actually is. So there's a couple things that happen when I say that. One is uh, childhood trauma, if it's, if it's that pre prevalent, then we are the majority. If we are the majority, why do we think there's something wrong with us? So if we're the majority, majority usually rules, there's got to be another reason that that statistic is as it is. So that began me on a journey of turning from the regular normal reaction to childhood trauma is how did I get so screwed with respect to parents? Aren't, aren't parents supposed to be good to you? Aren't uh, teachers supposed to be nice to you? Aren't priests supposed to be um, pure with you and not molest you? Um, why, uh, are, uh, you know, I really, uh, it, if you had an upbringing like mine, you would uh, be depressed or uh, addicted or um, angry all the time or uh, doing bad things because that's not the way it's supposed to happen. But that breaks down if it's seven out of 10, that's a majority. So then I say, what is that pain for that? What is pain in life for? Well, one, pain chisels us. You know, um, those of us who have had childhood trauma are in a very unique position to help people who have been in that same place. So instead of looking at childhood trauma as something to be ashamed of, something to have to be fixed, something that is going to follow us for the rest of our lives, something that's gonna hold us back, something that's gonna make us less than other people, something that's gonna make us always trying to catch up with others, that is all BS. It is belief systems that continue to make our, un our happiness unhappy <laughs> we are not going to claim the birthright of happiness if we continue to play that tape of that shouldn't have happened to me it's life is not fair life sucks uh i got a, a bad start i was handicapped as a child that is all not true and I am in that unique situation where I actually understand what it's like to be hurt as a child. I do know what it's like to be told that I'm fat, ugly, and clumsy. I for for to this day, uh, uh, I do I do know what it's like to to um, want to die as a child because of the pain inflicted on me physically, emotionally, mentally. I get that. And I do also get that I did nothing as a child to warrant that treatment. There was nothing that I could have done. And this is a common thing that children of trauma will, will go, one, did I make that up? Did, I, did that really happen? The other common thing is I must have done something to deserve this. I must have forgotten how bad I was as a child. And most children of trauma go to two extremes. One extreme is um, I'm a bad person and I really, and they're right. I deserve not to have any kind of success or happiness. That's one, you know, uh, uh, extreme. And many people who are marinating in that end up in therapy for 10 years or 20 years and they never come out of that maudlin pit of self-pity victimhood morass and not that you don't have a right to feel bad everybody has a right to feel as they do and have some um, righteous indignation about being treated that way the other extreme are people who say you know the past is past it i can't change it pick myself up by the bootstraps and I'm going to strive and I'm going to work hard and I'm going to prove everybody wrong who ever said that. And it's a very um, uh, hard, uh, uh, um, tiring, 
fatiguing, pushing, always, you know, never enough, got to do it, got to be the best, got to be the first, all of that, that just exhausts us to the point where we are successful on the outside, but inside we still carry that wound of it's never going to be enough. And then criticism becomes this giant dagger because it just proves that whoever it was that said we weren't good enough is correct. So those two extremes are usually what people go through. And I am so grateful that I went through what I went through because it chiseled me to a place to understand and write, not as a psychologist telling you how to be happy, but as a person who's gone through it and understands that it is a choice. And if you've had trauma, I want you to look at my eyes right now. And I want to say to you that everything that happened to you that was painful as a child was not deserved. You have no responsibility for bringing that on. And I will be the first to hold your hand and hold that flashlight and to give you a hug and, and to, to, to tell you that that giant hole that you're afraid to go into to look at what really happened because you're afraid you're Humpty Dumpty, you're going to fall in and then you're going to fall forever like those dreams and never be put back together. And the truth is, that's not true. You can go into that hole. We all have that dark hole in front of us that we don't want to go into. But I promise you, if you go in there and there's lots of coaches around that help with that, I'm only one based on what I've gone through that I can tell you without a, you know, with, with a, a matter of doubt that if you go in there and I hold the flashlight for you and you do the exercises in the book, there is a bottom, there are signs, you will not fall forever. And when you dig out all of the shiitake, all of the lies, all of the BS, at the very bottom is the seed that is truly you. And that seed is one of a kind, wonderful, it's beautiful, it's loving, loved and lovable, it's wrapped in a warm blanket of worthiness. That is who you really are. And when you find you, and when you acknowledge your balance centered self, then you can begin to heal that little sad one that never got to cry, to heal that one who never got to say, um, uh, I am beautiful, who, who never really understood who they really were or and are. And that healing process doesn't have to take 10 years. Uh, I work with clients eight weeks, eight months, 18 months. I've never worked with anyone beyond 18 months, depending on the level of the trauma, because we have a birthright and, it, and, and life is not forever. But our ability to take all of that shiitake that we just scooped out of the pit and now bring it back and use it as fertilizer to grow that seed that it uh, is called us to know that we are just like the drop of waters in the ocean and the sand, grains of sand and the, lea the leaves on the trees and the, the blades of grass, we're all one of a kind wonderful. And we all have unique talents and gifts and abilities to grow on this thing called life. And that's why we're here. So whatever has happened to you did not happen to you. It happened for you. And when you can embrace that truth, and when you can understand that um, life is way too short to be constantly crying or constant, then that was me. I'm not saying it in judgment. I spent 10 years feeling sorry for myself. I went and numb myself. I loved that feeling of, of not feeling. Uh, everything was about just falling asleep so that I could be whole. And uh, you can be alive and whole. We're going to take a quick sponsor break now. Now, you frequently hear me talking about how much I love Audible. Well, 
have a special gift for you. Audible is offering you a free 30-day trial. Go and download the audiobook of your choice. Look around. You have 30 days. There's so much to see in there. If at the end of 30 days you want to continue your membership, it will expand into all these extra goodies. And if you decide to stop the membership to cancel it, you still get to keep the gift. And guess what? The book that Dr. Marissa wrote with Michael Bernard Beckwith, Eight Ways to Happiness from Wherever You Are, it's in there on Audible. It could be the book that you choose to download. And now let's get back to this amazing education with Dr. Marissa. Again, bringing in the eight. It's not, you're not happy 100% of the time. If you're happy 100% of the time, you're dead. And we do not want dead people walking around or talking. 88% happy is your birthright. 12% of the time, you step in it. I'm 88% fabulous. 12% of the time, I say something I shouldn't. I do something I shouldn't. And I allow myself the humanness. And I can stop saying, I'll be happy when. I can be happy now, as I am with what has been done, with what hasn't been done, with how I look, with my body size, with my relationships. It's 88% fabulous. Thank you for saying all that. When I work with people as a kinesiologist so if there's no talk therapy happening but their spirits talking to me and very often i get very fine details of the history that they went through that's out of their awareness but their spirit knows it's there it brings it up but sometimes the information i call it putting it in a circuit flits by without us knowing the details it still gets cleared because it gets in the circuit. So it's all, all the different aspects. And I didn't realize the depth of your book. I'm sorry, I haven't read it yet, but I'm going to because I, I don't understand working the way you do, which doesn't mean I don't want to understand it. So see, because I've I, I'm actually downloading my own way of working with people. So I'm sure there's something there because there are no accidents. And I got up this morning and my uh, podcast downloads every Monday. My website was gone. Everything was gone. So <laughs> I'm somebody who lives in happiness. But I just kept thinking, okay, it's only 88% of the time because so many things were wrong that I didn't know were wrong last night. <laughs> Mm -hmm. it, it totally makes sense yeah and and there is no one way to heal there is no one method to heal I think the the blessing of humankind and the variety as I said everybody has unique talents gifts and abilities and so when whoever you resonate with is who you should be working with so there's no right way or wrong way, I say it's either useful or not so useful. And when shift happens, when shiitake happens, and I'll offer this to you, it's um, really important that we not do a spiritual bypass and say everything's okay because it isn't okay. It doesn't feel okay. Otherwise, we end up like George Costanza's father in Friends, when he uh, would walk around saying serenity now, serenity now, when it was definitely not serenity now. And it's important to feel disappointed and, and um, uh, angry and uh, um, bitter sometimes and a little envious sometimes and sad sometimes and anxious sometimes and lonely sometimes, but not too long and i'm a student also of the law of attraction the esther hicks way not necessarily the secret way which focused on getting stuff uh but the but the foundation law of attraction says that um what we focus on grows bigger so if you're focusing on all the bad things that are happening to you then you will get more bad things but if you focus on after 16 seconds 
and ask this question. So what I do is if, if I woke up and found out my website was gone, I would be like, what the fork? And dang it, gosh, darn it. And I put myself on a timer for 16 seconds and I allow myself to jump up and down and bite my pillow and you know, it, it, uh, do a silent scream because I use my voice so I don't wanna hurt my voice. And I taught my kids, you know, we do this which is, you know, not attractive, but it's much better than screaming at the top of your lungs. And then after 16 seconds, I take a breath and I do a three breath technology. So the first breath is soft shoulders, soft elbows, soft knees, engaging the body. The second breath is soft, um, releasing all the stories and the drama and you engage the mind. And then the third breath is Connecting with chi, eternal energy, the breath of life, which engages the soul and the spirit. And the soul is the connection between the spirit and the body and the mind. For me, that's my definition. And what happens at that point is then I can say, I can't wait to see what good comes out of this. And what that does is it takes me out of the victim. It takes me out of the anger and puts me into solution. That way I am open to the solution because I know that the universe, that the universe is a friendly place. I choose. Einstein says the most important question you can ask a human being is, is the universe friendly or not. And I use this with my form called acceptance at the end of the practice. We do this and release. And that form allows us to answer the question every time. It is friendly. Now, if you say it's not friendly and it's a choice, you can say the universe is not friendly. And many people are saying, Dr. Marissa, how can you say the universe is friendly? There's kids starving, dying of AIDS, the pandemic, there's so much loss, all the gun violence, um, all the uh, uh, division that is now out there, racism, you name it, it's wrong. Homelessness, um, mental illness, the war, all PTSD, there's so many things wrong. It's not a friendly universe. And I will say, well, actually all of those things are giving us an opportunity to move into creative solution, which is one of the best things about being humankind, emphasis on kind. It also is true that last night, the planets did not crash into each other. We woke up, have another day to hold and love and respect and innovate and create and be in wonder and bliss and harmonize and work together on creating solution. And so that is my proof that it is a friendly universe and that I choose to see every horrific thing that you saw in the Fox coverage as of Women's History Month. They highlighted me and told the story, which I'm so which was by design. Um, because all the bad things that happen to us, again, are here for our divine and best good. The universe is always conspiring for us, never against us. I call, if, you, if you're getting stuck because you're thinking I'm going to talk about God or Jesus or religion, I am not. And if you are a very religious person, I am not criticizing you at all. All I know is that... Um, I know there's a power outside of myself that is conspiring for me and that I choose to believe that all the bad things that happen for me are happening for me not and not um, to me because I call my God, yes, I, I just dropped the G word, um, the G bomb, my, my God, as I know God, and I grew up with a really religious punishing needs anger management class is God that I now don't call God, God, I call him my UPS man, my universal power source. Mm -hmm. And my UPS man delivers every morning when I pray and meditate, because I want my life. I want to live the way Ralph Waldo Emerson says success is to laugh often and much. Laughter is my favorite sound on the planet. 
and to know that one life has breathed easier because I have lived. And I am actually, we're going to substitute 88 million <laughs> or every person that is intended to come across my work and my words and my love and my peace, flashing peace, peace in, peace out, world peace through inner peace. All of that is because every single one of us has that purpose, not to do something, not even to help people. That's not my purpose. My purpose is to feel good most of the time. And by feeling good most of the time, I get to bask in work that makes me happy. 88% of the time. And helping people is one of those things. But I think a lot of us too get in that trap of, you know, we're not doing anything uh, meaningful unless we're helping somebody else. That's a little bit of a trap because you can spend your entire life helping other people and depleting yourself to the point where you are not happy. And that is not why we're here as well. If you can find happiness 88% of the time, then you're doing something that does help others, but it helps yourself first. But we don't grow up learning that. We grow up thinking that we're selfish and self-centered and there's something wrong with this and we're supposed to help other people. And that, my friends, is also an extreme that does not follow a prescription for a happy life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, I couldn't have asked for a better gift for my 75th show. Thank you so much for being you exactly as you are. And I wanna be sure we'll have all your links in the show notes so that everybody can contribute to your nonprofit and spread yeah. the word. And what everybody yeah. out there, be sure you check out all of Dr. Marissa's sites because there's some amazing stuff, opportunities to work with her in different ways. Just thank you, thank you, thank you. Absolutely. I would like to offer your listeners a free coaching session on the air. You don't have to be on camera. You can use an alias, but I do love working with people who have questions and, and aren't getting the relief that they want or through whatever ways that you're trying. And uh, that you can get to drmarissa.life, which the link uh, Ali is kind enough to put there. But I also wanted to invite you to free subscribe to my YouTube channel where you can get all past 749 shows as of today. Uh, I'm so grateful. It's uh, 356 six consecutive weeks on the air now you can get my uh, red carpet playlist with my interviews we just lost uh in the show we didn't lose her she's just on the other side you remember lieutenant ohura from star trek she uh went to the other side yesterday you can see my red carpet interviews with her um as well as uh, many beautiful people who um Don Wells have passed to the other side. She was Marianna on Gilligan's Island. So all of that is available for free on my YouTube channel. Would love to meet you there. And every weekday morning now, I'm on the air and would love to have you uh, tune in and interact with me there. Wow. Oh, I know what it takes to do it once a week. So that's, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, thank you. All right, peace in, flashing peace, peace in, peace out, world peace through inner peace. Thank you all for listening today. Remember to grab your free audible trial and take a listen to Dr. Marissa's book. Visit all of our sites or a whole bunch of links here in the show notes. You want to take advantage, especially of the call with her because she's quite an extraordinary person. She can help you in a ways that maybe you haven't found the right person for you because everybody has their own skills and their own angles and their own talents. Take her up on her offer. Be sure you visit all her sites because there's amazing stuff on there and catch her interview on Fox News. I think it's on Dr. Marissa Thought Life. Anyway, Troy and all the different programs, she has the opportunities, the chance to do the Qigong with her, all those things. Remember to download your gift from me, Step in a New Direction. Join our Facebook group, 
where you can make a new friend, where you can ask questions, where you're going to get extras that you won't get right here in the podcast episode. And visit our podcast site, because that way you can listen to or watch any episode of all that we've done. And this one's number 75. Remember to enjoy, that's capital I-N, capital J-O-Y, every moment, because nothing in your world's happening outside of you. It's all happening within your body, mind, spirit. I'll see you here next time.